Hello everybody and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Mackenzie. And my name is Claire. And today we will be discussing Death's Obsession by Avina St. Graves, uh, a cute little novella that I didn't realise was a novella when I suggested it, but here we are. Yeah, I'm very curious how you stumbled across this book. <laughs> uh, TikTok. Of course. <laughs> mm. <laughs> But yeah, also quickly, like Sin Graves. I know I said to this said this to you before, but like what a last name though. Even if it is a pseudonym yeah, cool. or if it's a real name. It's so cool. Sint mm. Graves. Wonderful. Sint Graves, I love that. All right, I shall start us off with the blurb. He's coming for you. Death is meant to come on a chariot of broken dreams or in the dark trenches of a storm, not in love letters and gifts. He did not take my soul when I was meant to die. He did not want it all the other times that I've offered it to him on a silver platter. Yet time and time again, he reminds me that I am his, his night monster, his dark love, his perfect other. Death was the only thing keeping me alive. He watches me from his corner, taunts me with sweet messages, marks my body with his touch as I sleep. He took the people that I love away from me. Still, no one believed me when I said that I saw the faceless man on the night of the accident. No one can escape death, but me, I'm chasing it. Beautiful. I want to do thoughts, feelings and emotions first, because I know you went more of an, of an emotional journey. <laughs> with this compared to me because <laughs> I didn't really but like oh well I want to I want to hear that journey but my thoughts feelings and emotions um it's just a book to me <laughs> it, it, was, it was quite short it was very easy to read smashed it out in a couple couple hours um it's a very basic simple book if you want to smash out your reading goal for the year this is definitely a book mm. to to read if you're just there to fulfill your goal this is definitely it another um dark romance dark uh, subject matter and everything like that so that's all fun and dandy there's like a little author disclaimer in the beginning where it talks about uh this is based on like lilith mythology or it's loosely based but not very accurate and i'm for one am not familiar with that sort of thing so Really, the book fell flat for me in that regard because I feel like I had to know something else about it in order to really understand it. But no, ultimately, simple book. It was a read. Very gnarly. <laughs> what about you, Kenzie? I enjoyed this book in the way that I enjoy a really philosophical question. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't enjoy it per se for like the smart and the blah 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 okay and everything i enjoyed it for the questions that it posed okay yeah about and i know that we had this conversation a lot but about like facing your own mortality and what that means right right and then truly like like i have qualms with the way it ended okay and i didn't think it was going to end like that and i'm very unhappy about it because i think that that per perpetuates uh, a very toxic and uh un, 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 what the, what's the word i'm looking for unrealistic end i guess very cool i i like that you took it from a philosophical point of view because i didn't think mm. it, this book was ever that deep <laughs> oh, well I, yeah, I, I got deep <laughs> you got deep like the simplicity of it reminded me of like the formatting especially reminded me of ice planet barbarians so i was like mm. i wasn't even taking it seriously yeah, I kind of was very critical of the main character. Why I was going to say I forgot her name, but her name's Lilith. <laughs> um, yeah, and just, I suppose, traumatised, but yet at the same time, in her own way, very weak-natured. Like, hmm. not wanting to break up with her boyfriend, even though he's not good for her, hmm. and or they're not good for each hmm. other, and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And just, yeah, her battling with her mental health and everything, and just, it would drive me crazy if I was in her position going through what she yeah. went through i'm gonna quickly like rattle off the plot and then get into like some of the nitty-gritty of it oh wait yeah um okay. but there was also a, a disclaimer why did why is it not here Just, i did not get this name there was in the in the front of it of the i must have skipped it of the kindle <laughs> yeah, yeah who reads that stuff these days yeah i screenshotted it but where is it where is it? it? That's exactly it, though. This book is considered dark and mature. It is not suitable suitable for anyone under the age of 18. Triggers include, but not limited to... There's a lot. Um, stalking, death, dubcon. What, what's that? Dubious consent. Oh, uh, of course. My bad. 
uh, anal double penetration, impact play, breath control, <laughs> mental illness, emotionally and physically abusive romantic relationship. I didn't read this. I just, <laughs> I just went over it. <laughs> you just... Uh, not with the MMC <laughs> prescription drug use. I was like, this is child's play. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've read Haunting Adeline. I don't need to read anything else. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, prescription drug use, alcohol and drug abuse, sibling death, parent death, cancer, off screen, PTSD, depression, anxiety, hallucinations, disassociation, traumatic events, suicidal ideation, attempted suicide, off screen, recording of sex- sexual intercourse without consent, depiction of a violent car crash. Now, first of all, I feel like I feel like a car crash isn't necessarily a trigger warning because car crashes Bruh. De- obviously depending Bruh. On, depending on severity <laughs> depending on severity can be quite violent but like <laughs> what disclaimer for everyone else here um as claire oh, says no. i don't think car crashes can be trigger warnings <laughs> so this sorry. year is the 10 year anniversary of my father dying in a car crash <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm just so out of it i don't know it's fine. I get it. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No, but then afterwards, there's the, if you by chance know Greek mythology you're a, and are well-versed in Latin, I sincerely apologize for this book. It won't be accurate. So it's just like the idea of yeah, Lilith and what she represents in all various iterations, like biblically or fictionally, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So. I only know of her from Diablo, and but she's also like a she demon. I only know of her from the Chilling Adventures of Super. <laughs> but was she like a she demon, like a demon person, yeah. succubus? Oh, she was like, yeah, she was like a naughty girl. <laughs> <laughs> a naughty girl, <laughs> like a promiscuous girl. Yeah. Well, then I guess that's the modern day Lilith representation. Yeah. Sorry, I can't stop thinking about the car crash. <laughs> That's right, I get it. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so the plot. Yeah, the plot. Whiz, whiz through it, please. <laughs> Lily. I'm going to say Lily instead of Lilith because I can't say Lilith because I have a lift. Um, anyway, so Lily um, was in a car crash an amount of time before the start of the book. I'm sure it tells us, but I can't remember. Um, yeah, it's been and a while. Her sister died in it, and what her sister's boyfriend died in it as well. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, her yeah. Died. Her sister died. Her parents also previously have already died, which that's fun. Um, She's an orphan, truly. Yeah, I couldn't perceive if Evan was in the car or not. I don't think he was. No. Okay, because she keeps referencing. So, and then Lily has a boyfriend, Evan, who's kind of a piece of shit, but it's kind of blamed on the car crash because he like obviously like emotionally was her crutch and stuff after the car crash because she was the only survivor and like she was meant to die she was in ICU like everyone thought she was going to not pull through blah 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 but she always claims that yeah she sees um this faceless man everywhere like she's hallucinating and yeah so she sees a therapist and the therapist just kind of gives her I guess antipsychotics um, but she still hallucinates at this faceless man. You may now take over for a little bit. No. <laughs> After okay, what I, I said, I'm not going to say anything until... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the uh, this faceless man, like, uh, Lily finds these little gifts everywhere. Like, it'll be, like, a lily, like a different type of li- lily. Or, like, she'll have a, a, a charcoal mark on her when she wakes up. Or things like that or she has like a nanny cam because she thinks someone's breaking into her apartment and she wakes up and there's like hours of footage missing and she just thinks she's going insane everyone else thinks she's going insane her boyfriend thinks she's going insane but it is actually death who is visiting her and he is in love with her for some unbeknownst reason um that's fun real pick me vibes um but she's just depressed and then she knows that she has to break up with Evan but she can't because he like looked after her so nice but he's just like using her for marijuana money um and he's also actively cheating on her just fun and he has housemates who obviously know what's going on and every time Lily goes over it like it says that he like one of them looks at her with like a pitiful look in his eyes and 
again, like an enabler is just as bad as a doer. So yeah, it's a really shitty situation for her. But yes. also, it could be um, like because I'm going to assume Evan tells his friends what uh, Lil- Lily tells him, and so if, they probably think she's just as crazy as well. And it's probably a part of the way how they interact with her too. That in the back of her mind. Mm. But mm. like bit bit rich coming from drugos, you know, they're the ones who want to judge. Uh, oh, and Lily also works in a coffee shop, which is fun. She's a barista, um, but she's also depressed because she wants to die and she has tried to kill herself and death just will not claim her soul. And anyway, so his antics kind of pick up and he's leaving her these little love notes, like, all like, soon my night storm, soon my monster, soon my love, which is, like, hot, but also, who the fuck are you? Mm. Now, the one thing I can get behind is she comes home sometimes and he just has like a five course meal mm-hmm. for her nice he sets also, her up he'll put like or also he'll put a thousand dollars in her bag yeah or yeah cash lying around anything everything yeah. she desires yeah jewelry he like changes all her jewelry so it's like expensive jewelry and not cheap shit he like fixes her clothes amazing okay so lily starts to have these dreams these wild fucking dreams where she appears in like a forest on a bed and they are sex dreams with death and she's like i'm dreaming this isn't real and he's like and he's hooded like, the entire time and though. he's hooded she can't see his face and he also has a shadow soul <laughs> that he can physically manifest that he can physically manifest but he can also do things i was not expecting that to be honest okay i don't care about the shadows this is what i care about okay there's a scene everybody where the shadow soul is anally penetrating Lily. Mm -hmm. And then death is vaginally penetrating Lily. Yep. Okay, that's too many sausages in a hot dog bite. (laughs) What a a description. Too many sausages in a hot dog bun. What the fuck? Okay, okay. (laughs) All right, just because you won't be able to handle it, Kenzie. I look. I I have heard stories. I have had conversations where people. This has been a thing, and I just can't imagine it being comfortable for anyone involved. No. Yeah. Honestly, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I suppose she's liking it in the moment. So, um, but then there was there's another scene like later on where one of them is taking her maybe anally, and then and then she's just downing death's a dick. So, which is probably more comfortable because yeah, you know. Mm. The, 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 the bun, so to speak, isn't <laughs> over, over full. Look, I'm not judging for anyone for any anything that they enjoy. I just can't imagine that that would feel good. Yeah, yeah. And I had an inclination before reading it that it was going to be, like, dark fantasy. I wasn't expecting it to be, like, this sort of level of smutty. I just thought there'd be a lot of sex scenes, but not yeah. this real... Yeah, uh, overexertion. And then also but... there is, yeah, this really weird, like, obsession with, like, faceless men or, like, masked men mm. or, like, bike helmets or, like, not seeing who's doing stuff to you. Like, I just don't, I don't get, I don't understand. Just turn the lights off, you know? <laughs> turn the lights off and so, solve everyone's problems. <laughs> but I guess that gives the air of the dubious consent to it all. Yes. In a way, well, too. Especially, yeah, the dream, the dream. And then I think at one point she was woken up. Uh, yeah i'm not sure a lot of it is really weird it's just really weird (laughs) yeah and she believes she's just going crazy or she's it's it's just a real bizarre world that i feel like i truly would think that i was also going crazy nothing makes sense yeah it's like like you're having sex dreams with death but you're waking up and you have like the oh the manifestation yeah of that yeah probably put it down to like creepily paranormal stuff like that's as far as i'd go because uh, yeah and also mm. with that element of lily lilith being unable to kill herself like i'd be trying bro i'd be like get me out of here i want to reset mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah all right do you want to just like f- finish off like the main plot and then we can just snowball off of yes. your um qualms yes okay so lily goes to break up with Evan and finally because and then she also notices that like there's a light blue sweater in the room and like a matching scrunchie so like obviously he's been cheating on her um but anyway it turns out Evan is dead so death has just taken him and there's this whole thing of like okay I can forgive murder (laughs) 
as we know. But I don't know if I can forgive premature murder. <laughs> premature and murder. I love it. Premature murder. That's what I'm looking for. Also, death is like, um, I wouldn't have been able to take his soul if it like it wasn't ready. And it's like that feels like such a cheap cop out, you know? Yeah, it's it, yeah. I feel like any sort of character archetype surrounding a deathly character, Grim Reaper, Death God, whatever. Yeah, it seems like it happens when it happens. Not more of a dictator. Like, yeah, he was a yeah. Like yeah, he was a piece of shit. But I don't think he deserved to die. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, and then so you're saying that if I can uh, summon death and have a sexual relationship with him, get him to fall in love with me, that then I can get him to murder people for me. Apparently, in this right. iteration. Where, sure. Where's my spell candles? <laughs> Let's get going. Start rubbing the hands together. Yeah, no, I just always feel like, especially with death, as I just said, like with the archetypes, like it happens when it happens. They don't necessarily force the murder or the death at hand. Like, yeah, they they come when the soul's ready or they just collect the soul when it's mm-hmm. done. Like, they're not on the hunt for anybody in particular. They're just, yeah, are summoned when required. Yeah, and it just, it just adds to the dark fantasy possessive nature of it because obviously he's realising that, um, yeah, Evan is definitely no good for uh, Lilith while he's also growing more and more impatient in a way for him wanting to be with her as well. So, it's like, just get him out of the way. But yeah, yeah, that just didn't make sense. It was very strange. Because, yeah, Evan didn't have to, didn't have to die. He can just still be a mm. shitty person who cheated and does drugs. Like they don't, de- yeah, they don't really deserve to die. But and then the ending, Kenzie. Um. Okay. So there's this whole thing where um, death, uh, like periodically disappears for a while. Also, no, we find out his name is Le- Leighton. Leighton. I don't know how. Yeah, like uh, uh, Leighton. Leighton. Okay, so Leland. Um, Le- oh my god! <laughs> All right, you can't just change these people's <laughs> names. <laughs> We'll just call him Leland Death. Periodically, li- okay, Death periodically leaves Lily and she gets super depressed. And I think like the longest was like three months or something, whatever. But he like leaves her notes and stuff. And he's saying, he's like, you're not ready. Like, you need to uh, like fully, like, I don't know, like, you need to open your eyes and then you'll be able to see, like, whatever. And then, so she's like doing really well. She's off her med. She's happier at work. She um, is going and visiting like her sister's grave and talking to her and everything. And then, you know, she, um, like these flashes she's like oh suddenly i know that death has like dark curly hair or whatever and i know that he has a strong like high cheekbones and a strong jaw or whatever and so like it's this acceptance of her fate that like leads her to like uh, open her third eye if you will and i was like cool like he's making her overcome her trauma he's making her work through her mental health he's making her get to a better place in order to fully accept him in her life because I thought it was going to be just a uh, death is inevitable kind of situation. However, she figures it out that she has to die, mm. which is fucking shit. So she goes back to, like, the tree where um, the crash happened, and then she fucking dies. He comes and takes her soul. Yeah, she lies down and he gives her the kiss yeah. of death, all that nonsense. Yeah, and then she, like, she, like gets up and she's like, oh, I see my lifeless body. Yeah. Here's what gets me. Yeah, it's it's a pretty shit characterization where, you know, it's once you're happy or where you find the right path to happiness and you are out of the traumatic trenches and you're living your best life almost. And then that's when it's your t- your time to go, when the time to go mm. for her was really in the pits of her depression because she really doesn't want to be alive anymore. Yeah. She doesn't want to suffer anymore. But then why... Yeah. Why, why die when you're at your happiest? If also, if she was meant to die that night, and that's what she has to accept, why didn't he take her that night? Yeah, and here's a big qualm for me. Like, we don't really get the full picture of that incident, I feel. It's just said mm-hmm. in the blurb and in the description, um, she offered me her soul and I didn't take it. Oh, but then there's this whole thing of, sorry, when she, like, dies and she kisses death. She has all these memories of, like, being with him, like, on a beach or, like, Mm. all these times she said I love you or whatever to him and she can't remember it but she has these memories. And it's like, so is this, like, a faded mates kind of situation? Like, I'll find you in every life situation? 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm thinking, is this some sort of it's, weird... It's just not... It's not explained well. It's not written well. I understand the premise. And I like that. I love Faded Mates like that. I like... I love the Fallen series. I love that for that. But I just... This wasn't explained well. No, yeah. Because I was kind of confused towards the end. I'm like, so is this... Or even if, is this like a reincarnation thing? Where the persona <laughs> of Lilith is through, the, through different people and death finds her through these deathly traumatic situations yeah i was so confused and with the the mate thing as well um i just feel like in a pff, relatively modern world i don't think it really works but ultimately yeah the whole there needed to be more expansion on the on the moment that lilith was like in the car crash moment take my soul i want to die and then death being like no because otherwise then he like just knows too much and has too much power over the narrative. When it's meant to be, I feel like, a balanced story of, of love. But it's not. He knows more than her. Yeah. And he has this, yeah, whole, yeah, I suppose divine knowledge of everything about her. And she knows nothing <laughs> until her, yeah, yeah, third eye opens up. He doesn't even yet know what he looks like. Yeah. Like, it would have been nice if we had a, a flashback or even woven into her chapters where she might be thinking a bit too hard or maybe even dreaming about having those past moments with death or whatever on the beach yeah instead of it being yeah. just like a little shocking revelation that they've because mm. then that that just means that they've known each other for a long time before and that she it insinuates that she's just forgotten him when for as far as we're aware this is the first point that they've inter ever interacted so how does that work it makes sense yeah yeah yeah, I wasn't going to be harsh, but yeah, it, it is a bit of a simple book, but like, there's a reason why it's only 178 pages, and it's just probably because of the smart. Like, they wanted some weird, yeah. freaky shit, and to dive yeah. into some mental health issues, and... But it just, oh, I know, and again, it's like, I'm not responsible for your triggers or whatever, but so are you perpetuating the idea to people that like, you can do all this work on yourself, and you can accept that death is inevitable, and that pain is a part of who you are, but at the end of the day, like... Even if you're happy, if you want to die, you die. Yeah. I don't know. It, yeah. It's cheap. Like, I feel like no one wants to die when they're at their peak happiness. It's always that at your low points is when you feel like you want to die. Mm. And it's just mm. a weird flip. But I guess at the end of the day, it was her choice. But it sucks that it comes after the healing journey. It's like, all right, now I'm ready to die. Mm. No, it should be now I'm ready to live. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that that would be... I thought... Uh, I almost feel like it would have hit way more if it was yeah as soon as you're ready to live then you can accept me into your life mm. and the yeah. way he influences her life by providing money and jewelry and tangible things like she could live with him just being there for she could have a full ad adult human life with him still there and i feel like it wouldn't have made much of a difference like she didn't need to die yeah, didn't she? So in the end as well, when she is dead, like I think it's implied that like another car crashes and he like gives her the option like he can, she can go and take the person's soul. Yeah, like, okay, so suddenly you're Lady Death? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's another thing. I think because, what, what did he call yeah. her? Something about a storm, like, or night storm or something? Night storm, yeah. Something, and it was a stormy night as well and... Mm. Yeah, it, it, I feel like that insinuated that during, like, a very rare special occasion, like, she might have the opportunity mm. to do that. Yeah, it just seems really far-fetched. <laughs> yeah, and what I was trying to say before, like, if death can physically manifest in her life already now, she doesn't need to be in the afterlife this mm. early in her life. Like, yeah. she, she could still have a physical and tangible relationship with death not having to die yeah. <laughs> right now yes. after her healing. Yes. Yes, exactly. And then it could be, you know, live your life or even hit harder. I would have been way more emotional if he, yeah, like disappeared. He's like, you know, like soon. It will always be soon. And she went and she lived a long, happy life. Mm -hmm. And then she met death as an old friend at the end of her time, <sighs> like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. And then, yeah, he was like, I told you it would be soon or whatever. And she can like return to her young hot body or whatever. And then, yeah, she can spend her eternity with death like in order to accept him she must move on from him yeah yeah and yeah pro yeah not fear death and that death is inevitable yeah uh, yeah just ultimately just seemed really stupid that yeah she just in the end just allowed herself 
to die to be with death um no oh here we go here's what i was gonna say all right it's giving just that it's the dark fantasy archetype characterizations it, it's never original but it's just a incredibly broken woman being saved by a dubious morally gray character mm -hmm. and obviously mm -hmm. Away is also through sex between the both of them as well. Yes, but it's yes. just giving yeah, just intense broken woman. Yeah, she's lost her entire family. Her current relationship is I toxic. I am sick of these men saying that an orgasm will help you and save you. <laughs> I, I mean, the double penetration saved I mean, your life. What yeah. can I say? <laughs> Post nut clarity. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of having the individual triggers that the authors want, they should just be like trigger warning extremely broken woman <laughs> yeah like she is yeah emotionally gone obviously to the point where she mm. wants to die herself and mm -hmm. but then everyone wants like a weird man to obsess over them and to to save them it's really it's just like mm. a whole savior complex thing but mm. then she's i think this is how the author wrote the book she just wanted a broken woman to be saved by a man but then intertwined this sort of weird fate destiny reincarnation mm -hmm. question mark uh mm -hmm. stuff around it and obviously there was no i love substance. death as a character like i love the exploration of death as a character and i love the many iterations that they are given throughout literature but ugh, like not everyone needs to be a shadow daddy you know no shadow daddy and also out. i couldn't help but imagine skullduggery pleasant and so i was just imagining a skeleton <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> I had Sorry. no idea what to expect. <laughs> like, I was like, faceless man. I was like, yeah. Death, t yeah, to me, as I was reading it, I was like, yeah, I wonder what his physical character uh, characteristics I, are. Well, I imagine that he just, yeah, like, manifests in the way that is appealing. Oh, fair enough. But yeah, I wasn't yeah. expecting tattoos. I don't know. Because I, I do, was... yeah, like the, excuse me, Alice. I do like the idea of, like, when, yeah an individual meets death that you recognize them like on an intrinsic level i guess because that would be comforting and not as scary yeah 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 for sure and i was just gonna say i was yeah picture uh picturing the um which grim reaper is it like family guy grim reaper <laughs> oh my god yes <laughs> <laughs> just like a sarcastic little asshole but no yes but this yeah. death is physically attributed to that of a current book talk shadow daddy morally gray character yeah. physique like that's who he is yeah and it's like what tattoos would death have like does death have a southern cross tattoo <laughs> <laughs> he, he'd have an eye he'd have a clock he'd have a rose and then a flower and yeah. another flower or something you know he'd have this stopwatch what is it yeah. it's always a stopwatch it's a stopwatch an eye and a rose <laughs> always yeah. no he has like yeah. a knuckle, like a word no, he has death across his knuckles. <laughs> death rocks. Yeah, death rocks. <laughs> yeah I, it just seems like a silly book. And, like, again, if you want to tick off your reading goal, this book can be for you. Like, yeah, I don't think, it, yeah, it was that great, but definitely needed to be expanded upon. Um. Okay, shall we talk about qualms? Yeah, big qualms, go. Okay, but before we talk about qualms, I just want to talk about one thing that I actually really enjoyed, and that was when... Lily asks about like the afterlife or whatever, and Death says, "If you believe in reincarnation, then yes. you're going to be reincarnated. If you believe in like heaven and hell, then that's the path that you'll go on. Like, if you believe in nothing, then that's what awaits you." And I was like, "Yes, that is what is written. That's written so well because that's what I truly believe. Like, I don't give a shit what you believe in, but like, if what you believe in is what's going to meet you after death, and that brings you comfort, then go right ahead." <laughs> Yeah, I especially made note of that as well. Yeah, and it's not mm. alienating anybody. It is not pushing a particular religion or ideology on anybody. It's, yeah, what a... Because, like, I feel like death can be a, a sensitive topic and can cause some, yeah, anxiety if, if people don't know, like, what's going to mm. happen to them. But, yeah, mm. it's just nice to know that, like, whatever you feel is comforting to you and, yeah, what will make you feel comfortable when approaching, like, death, I guess uh yeah, yeah. It, it's great it, it was th probably the absolute highlight of that of the book was was that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. covering right. all your all your bases yeah and ultimately if you just rot in the dirt for sleep for all eternity then that's it too huh. if you want the worms to eat you <laughs> yeah the parasites 
come back as a zombie. All right. Christ, she groans. I'm going to need to see a fucking chiropractor for all the weight I'm pulling around here. <sighs> Copy and paste from TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm imagining Christ, the sound. I need to see my... a fucking chiropractor. Yep. God. So this is just trying to be, trying to catch on to the, the book talk. Yeah, dark smart bandwagon, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, other quabs that's just yeah but like how do you plagiarize that <laughs> or like how how do you copyright that uh imaginary friends don't leave a grand of cash in my handbag or restock my cupboard with food <laughs> yeah but anytime and she then... tries to prove it it all disappears except mm-hmm. except like evan just thinks she's hiding money from him which is fair yeah. but like yeah i thought he was going to become more of a, a prick towards that like i feared for her life yeah sorry i was continue. like he's gonna kill her sorry and then the fates have not yet called upon his soul i decided that he lost it the second he laid his eyes on me. which like get fucked and also she's been with him since the accident so like you've had ample opportunity for him to die as well in the yeah. other way yeah it just it's very convoluted like it's it's yeah giving possessive and obsessive but yeah. not in a in a fun cutesy way because, yeah, she wanted to break up with him then and there, and then that would have been it. They would have gone their separate yep. ways. Exactly, and he wouldn't have fucking died. I think they did have a little argument about money, and he grabbed her, but then he realised mm. what he did, and I don't think he would have ever gone too far in more of an abusive sort of way, but, yeah, I, yeah. I reckon, yeah, they would have just been able to break it off, and it that would be that. He wouldn't mm-hmm. fight it. Because, like, what's the point if you're already cheating with another girl? Like, why do you want Lilith to hang around? Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I've said I've said everything else. Yeah. See, my biggest qualm was, yeah, just the lack of impact of the whole... In the moment of the crash where Lilith gave up, wanted to give up her soul and wanted to die that day. And then Death's like, mm-hmm. nah, bitch, you're going to suffer. Mm-hmm. I just thought maybe we could have seen that. Or mm. there could have been flashbacks of that woven into the book. Or we could have gotten, like, yeah, a whole couple of chapters of the day leading up to the accident. You know, like a little montage, perhaps. Exactly. I needed more explanation of the accident. Yeah, I wanted more context. Yeah, more mm. depth in that regard. Because otherwise it's like... I Otherwise we're just believing what death says in his perspective Mm -hmm. he's like you gay you i didn't want to take your soul it's like all right but why like what was the conversation was it like maybe it was like all right when i'll see you when i'm ready to die again or something i don't know and then that's like can be a revelation that they've known each other Mm -hmm. or whatever another qualm is just like deaths yeah weird impatience it's like oh no actually well he is the patient one but it's always soon 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 but at the same time he is in a way trying to accelerate things by Allah killing Evan mm-hmm. and then just ding dong ditching in the name all in the name of healing for her self healing which I think is just stupid because she just started feeling codependent on him anyway yes which is not healthy and then she eventually worked her way getting over that where it became more of a healthy thing where she was writing to like a pen pal that never responded yeah. but then she she eventually but it accepted was. they were just hidden yeah yeah, that would, yeah, which is, I think, it's, I think the author was trying to be clever and weirdly romantic and it just didn't hit because I feel like yeah. it would have made Lilith feel much better if she was getting the responses and getting the encouragement and knowing and not feeling ignored. I, I just don't know. It's like he put her through the healing journey, which wasn't really necessary. It seemed a bit too arduous even for her because mm. like at the end of the day, like she, she lost everybody. She just has death to lean on. You know what? Mm-hmm. This is a toxic relationship. He isolated everyone from her. <laughs> He's made her feel like she's crazy. And she has no choice but to be with him. Um, also, I think one of the things were that was incredibly important was her medication, her antipsychotics or whatever. I feel like, I, I don't know if it's just me reading too much into it or trying to be overly analytical, but I got the sense that they were hindering her memory of death. Yeah. And that as yes. soon as she got off them, like that's when she, yeah, her third eye, metaphorically, was opened and she was able to, to see him and see things. But honestly, if you were, had a very traumatic near-death experience, and you saw pff, a shadow figure, 
and he would bounce around throughout for months of your life or even years. Like, you'd think you were going crazy and you think you'd need to be medicated, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like the medication, as like, with that idea of suppressing her memory of death, it shouldn't really work either. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It shouldn't work ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, like antipsychotics should work, but like, I don't, if we're going for this soulmate bullshit, then she should have been able to see him regardless of the hindrance, because it's mm, not about okay. the chemical imbalance in her brain. It's about her entire soul and being <laughs> intrinsically yes. connected to death. So she should be able to. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I feel like there were lots of good ideas. Yeah. In the book. I just feel like they weren't yet executed that great. <laughs> it really came across to me as, oh, I'm going to get on the dark romance Shadow Daddy smut book trend and then make bank. Because mm. mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure this book had a lot of reviews and stuff on the Goodreads. Yeah, 40,000 plus ratings and like 5,000 reviews. Like, that's a lot. Yeah. So I feel like that's relatively successful. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. And a lot of people just want to read it for the rot. But no, it was a good idea. And um, maybe if it was a more in-depth iterate, uh, iteration or retelling of Lilith as a she-demon, succubi, whatever the fuck representation she is, like, maybe it could have been better. If you're trying to make a book that's based off of a mythological theme or characters, maybe it should be more explained as well in that regard because death calls her night creature and i did read a little thing an article online because i was trying to look it up like lilith representations and stuff and there is a there is one where it does mention oh no the name lilith is translated as night monster and it's like yeah well but like what yeah i'm just trying to think like other than the name how can she also be represented as a night monster? Like, quote-unquote, thematically. But, I don't know. That's just just me. <laughs> she, she's a monster in the sheets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, maybe. Um, and then just other qualms. Qua- uh, qualms is just, yeah, the relationship with Evan pissed me off because I think it just gets to the point where she they're just so comfortable being together despite the relationship being bad. And she does... Lament that Evan like was a good guy while um mm. she was uh in the hospital and like post accident, but then it got to a point where he he just kind of spiraled downhill as well for his own mm. mental health, um and it's just like a vicious cycle. So it really doesn't seem fair to also hate Evan too much because I feel like he did what he could, but then they just both kind of fall into yeah depressions and bad habits together. And yeah, she didn't want to break up with him or they didn't want to break up with each other because they're just comfortable with that life. They've just sort of like accepted that they're the ones together yeah. because no one's yeah. afraid the to devil, make... The devil you know rather than the devil you don't know. Mm. But then obviously, yeah, death forces the hand, which was, again, unnecessary because she was about to break up with him that day. <laughs> um, yeah, as soon as the roommate said that he was sleeping, I was like, he is totally dead. Yeah. There's no way he's alive. Um, and of course he, yeah, well, it's explained that he's, it's been, the, 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 yeah, that he overdosed. It was, yeah, guised under that. I, again, something that was written badly, it's like, okay, so sure, overdose, but they call the ambulance or whatever and they question her and the roommate and they're like, oh, we found him like that. I feel like there should have been a little bit more of an investigation. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, no like- worries. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, Ugh, could be taken in or something. I don't know. Yeah. Death death fucked the paramedics' minds, and so they were just <laughs> free, you know. They, they did the yeah. whole Jedi mind trick. These are not the murderers you're <laughs> looking for. Yeah, I feel, yeah, the legality of it all and the the procedure, <laughs> and, and, like, who really knows? Yeah, it's, a nev- it's, a, it's a brain rot novella. It's not meant yeah, to be taken it really seriously. is just a bad book entertainment if you want to have a laugh and, like, you know, if you want to think critically, you can. and Or just bond with a friend of ever how bad it is. Um, but yeah, I was not expecting um, a shadow threesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it, though. Because yeah. not often do we get threesomes in um, <laughs> in smart books these days. Or especially, at least in a the devil, books. especially a devil's yeah. threesome. Yeah, a devil's threesome. Literally. Wow. No, um, but like the devil's threesome is two men and a woman. 
Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. I was just thinking of different things. I'm just thinking like a devil and like the numbers relating to the devil is three and there were just three people. It's six. But, but, but like three as well, like 3 a.m. and shit, you know, paranormal. But it's 666, six, six, 3 a.m. is a witching hour because oh, um, right. it mocks the Holy Trinity. Oh, well, they, well, in that sense, I guess is what I'm trying yes. to explain. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get there eventually. Religion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah, as you said, yeah, it brings up the philosoph- philosophical conversation around death and yeah, like how comfortable you feel around it and surviving traumatic death experiences and stuff like that. Like, it's a very, yeah, deep and dark theme. Do you fear death? No, I fear being buried alive. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't fear me? But I don't. Would you ever put yourself in a position where that could be possible, though? I would no. avoid... Buried alive could mean anything. Like, a wall falling in into a cave. You actually being yeah. in a grave and someone fucking you over. Yes. Buildings collapsing. Ugh. Yeah, I don't really fear death, but so long as it's not a painful experience, is just all that I'm worried yeah. about. Like, if, if I'm going to die, I don't want it to be a painful way. Just overdose and go to sleep. Yeah, or just die in my yeah die in my sleep or something. But yeah, I don't want to suffer or just yeah. But I suppose yeah, dying peacefully is the is the ideal way to go for for everybody. But it can't always happen. Should we go to the stars that listen? We can go to the stars that listen. Also, just quickly, her th- Lilith's therapist was a dickhead. Just like you're crazy <laughs> and just drugs her up. Yes, <laughs> the entire time. Who cares? <laughs> That's yes. the way to go. She comes back saying it's spewing the same Mallory. shit. Easy money. Easy. Easiest money and client of her life. All right. The stars that listen. Oh, oh, hey, no, it's hey, all hey, good. Hey, it's all good. Hey. The stars that listen is a segment we do at the end of the podcast where we find a five-star review and a one-star review that we resonate with or want to fight with. Uh, we always start with the one stars because we like to end on a positive note. And I have one million one star. <laughs> Would you like to go first, or do you want me to go first? Uh, I can go first. You go first. All right. Alrighty. <clears throat> My first one star review. If someone ever called me a night monster, they're getting punched <laughs> in the throat. I saw that one. <laughs> um, another one. I got two on the same screenshot. So the first one is: This feels a little bit like if ChatGPT wrote a dark romance, which is pretty harsh, but it's pretty funny. And then my last one is, uh, uh, this was 170 pages of the same five pages. Awake. Thinks she's crazy. Shit boyfriend. Coming for you, my storm. Sleep spice. Awake thinking it was a dream. Then repeat. Horrid. I agree. And that was it. Uh, oh, and then one more. Um, these TikTok girlies, they lie. Okay, well, you stole nearly all of mine, but that's okay. I <sighs> see. I had a feeling uh, we were going to have the exact same ones. This is fan fiction at best. Our female protagonist has exactly zero interesting qualities. Our male protag- protagonist somehow is obsessed with that. Yep, I agree. And then death wears skinny jeans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's the thing. There was no real character personality or anything at all. It was just... But is it also just representative of depression? Like, you're just living day-to-day life. It is boring. Or are mm. you just trying to survive? Mm. I don't know. Oh, well, do five stars. All right, my five star is like a couple of paragraphs, but it makes up for the one stars that I harshly <laughs> gave out. Okay, <clears throat> my, f- my five star, the first sentence is a quote, to the girls who think that the Grim Reaper will fuck like a god. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's me, I'm the girls. No, but seriously, I finished this in just a couple of hours and I can't get over how romantic it was. Pff, what book were you reading? It was so good. It's dark, but in a romantic way and deals with it a lot. So, girl, check your trigger warnings. The main character being Death himself and the reference to my one and only muse, Mother of Demons Lil- Lilith, really adds to the paranormal aspect to this, which makes it all the more interesting. And yet this book carries a lot of personal development for the MC, who deals with the aftermath of a very heavy loss. It's the perfect cocktail of death, romance, grief, spice, and, f- and a female MC that doesn't quite fit in this mundane world. And if you don't know what shadow play is, you're going to love it. I have crying myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I mean, you I did have so a... lonely. You... Oh, oh. <laughs> no, they just loved it so much. No, I didn't. You cry? I had an... No, I didn't cry. I just said it destroyed my soul in the way that I was so upset. See, I feel like you've interpreted my message wrong. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> because... I, I am misinterpreting yeah. <laughs> what you're saying these days. No, it destroyed my soul in the way that I was so angry at the end because, like, all that and she just fucking dies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, anyway. Yeah, what's the point? <laughs> okay. Thank you all for listening. Um, stay safe out there. Don't fuck shadow daddies, for the love of God. I mean, if you see death in a dream, please see a therapist and a good <laughs> no, therapist. If you, no, if you see death in a dream, you got to fuck him. Ugh, okay, anyway. <laughs> you will find us on Instagram at letterbox underscore book underscore club. From there, you will find us in all the places, Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, SoundCloud. If you're nasty, that is all. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love stay you. Stay safe out there. Stay safe. <laughs> all right. Catch us next week. Bye. Bye.